Okay, uh, instantaneous rate of change. So we're talking about a rate of change, and I'll draw a small graph here so we get an idea of what that really means. Um, instantaneous rate of change is when we're talking about the rate of change at like a specific point. Now, the, normally the way we find rate of change with a linear function is we take two coordinates and find the slope. But when finding instantaneous rate of change, it's usually because we don't have a linear function. And what we're trying to find is a rate of change of a line that's tangent to this. So it'd be something like just passing there. And at this specific point, what's the rate of change? Well, we can't find slope of this red line I've just drawn if I only have one coordinate. Mm -hmm. I need to have two coordinates. So normally what we do is we fake it and pretend it touches at another point that's so very close. So for instance, let's say in this question it's 4, which it is happens to be. Um, you could find the slope of this red line by finding the slope or the values at 4. And let's say this is, you know, 5. 4 and 5, and then another point at 4.00001 and whatever its y value is, okay? But instead of doing that, we've developed a bit of a formula here. And this formula uh, deals with the rate of change of y, so this triangle means change. Change in y divided by change in x. So this is essentially, that's what slope is. Um, the way we figure it out is we take our function and we take our a value. Our a value is exactly where we are. So in this case, 4 is our a value, okay? Um, so when we go to plug values in for this a, we plug in 4, okay? h stands for a term that is infinitely close, which would kind of be like our 4.001, okay? So we're talking about, we're not actually going to put a value in for h, but that's what it stands for, something that's really, really close to the point we're at right now, okay? And the f is essentially what our function is. And our function is this guy here, this entire equation underneath. So we're going to be plugging those values into that. It's okay. So we're going to put this into, uh, into the equation like that. So we have change in y divided by change in x is equal to. So what they're saying is take the function and replace any variable. And in this case, the variable is t. So we're going to replace all of the t's with this bracket here. What's inside this bracket? <coughs> Oopsie. What's inside? There we go. This bracket. So this t is going to be replaced with this bracket. Okay. And then we're going to do it again. We're going to again take that function and replace the t's in that bracket with a. And a happens to be 4 in this case. So the very first part of this, I'll only do this one step at a time, um, is equal to the function... I'm going to replace a. Well, we know a is going to be 4 in this question, right? So 4 plus h minus the entire function when 4 is the variable. Okay, that's what the f stands for. Let's go back to black there. There you go. All divided by h. So in other words, we're looking at uh, when we're at 4, what's the rate of change when h is something really small? So now we're going to actually plug this function into it. So again, rate of change over x is equal to, so we're going to put the entire function in now. So for this part here, we replace this entire thing with a function, negative 4.9. And instead of putting t, we put 4 plus h. So that's what we replaced our, our t with, the 4 plus h, okay? Um, and then plus 5,000. And that's what this is here. We've just replaced that entire thing with this function. And then we subtract the function when we're at 4. Well, the function when we're at 4, again, is negative 4.9. But in this time, we replace t with the number 4. And sorry, that should be squared, correct? Yeah. 4 squared plus 5,000. Okay. So that's what f at 4 is. So we've repeated this equation twice. In one case, we actually plug a variable in, and we're going to get a, a solid number. We're going to get whether it's a whole number or decimal fraction. But in this one, we're still going to be left with variables, the one on the right there, or sorry, on the left. And all of this is going to be divided by h. Essentially, the goal is really at the end to take a common factor of h, and we're going to try to uh, factor it out. So let's work at these kind of one step at a time. Uh, the very first bracket here. 
This becomes negative 4.9 because it's squared is 4 plus h times 4 plus h, right? Uh, plus 5,000. We're going to try to solve more than one thing at a time because there's so many calculations in here. Okay? And then this one becomes 4.9 times, well, 60 plus 5,000, right? And again, it's all divided by h. But what we're going to do, just to save us some paper space, is we're going to just strictly focus uh, on the top. Okay? So we're just going to work on the top, and at the very end, we'll just divide everything by h instead of having to continuously to write it over and over again. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. So then from there, we've got to use our FOIL method. 4.9. Um, we're going to get h squared plus 8h plus 16 plus 5,000. Okay. Um, 16 times negative 4.9. So 4.9 negative. Oops, that didn't work. 4.9 negative times 16. Negative 78.4. So subtract bracket negative 78.4 plus 5,000 is going to be equal to. We then distribute this 49 into everything. So that'll become negative 4.9 h squared minus, because it's negative times a positive, negative uh, 4.9 times 8, 39.2, 39.2 h. And we already did 4.9 times 16, so minus 78.4. And then plus that 5,000. And all of that is going to be subtracted by this value here. It's negative 78.4 plus 5,000. So 78.4 negative plus 5,000. 49215. Should have been 0.6. Not sure why they wrote it like that. Okay. Uh, then from there, we're going to simplify any like terms we have. Uh, so these guys are going to become like terms. And we can drop this bracket too. So then all three of these are going to become like terms. So we're going to be left with, when we brought, drop the brackets, negative um, 4.9h squared minus 39.2h. And when we combine all of those numbers together, I think they're going to cancel each other out. Let's just double check. Uh, 5,000, subtract 78.4, subtract 4921.6, right? 49.6, 0. Perfect. So all three of those terms, and this is commonly what should happen, all three of these terms essentially cancel each other out. Okay? So we're just left with these front two terms here. And again, remember, even though I didn't write it all the way in, it's all divided by h. Okay? Now on the top... What I've noticed is there's actually an h in both these terms. So we're going to common factor that h value out. So we common factor h out. We're left with negative 4.9. There's still going to be 1h because it used to be squared. Minus 39.2. The h is now gone. And again, that's all divided by the term h. Well, because I have h on the outside, these two h's can now cancel out. Right? In fact, h is supposed to be so small that it's almost like a, a value of 0, and we can't really divide by a value of 0. So that's the whole reason we're trying to cancel this h out at the end. Okay. So then what we're going to find is we have negative 4.9 um, h minus 39.2. That's what this is equal to. And h, like we said, was supposed to be so small that we can substitute it with the value of 0. So when we substitute it with the value of 0, we end up getting 4.9 times 0, which is 0. We get negative 39.2. Okay. So what we discovered as t at 4, or we should say s at t, when t is 4, write it like that. So when we're at the coordinate of 4, the rate of change is negative 39.2. In other words, that coordinate is somewhat like that. Okay, 
So the whole point of that is H, you're supposed to be able to replace H with the number 0. But we couldn't do that without factoring H out because it would always be divided by 0. And we can't divide a term by 0. So once we've factored out the two H's, whatever's left, we replace H with 0. And then that will give us our final term there. So that would be the instantaneous rate of change when T was equal to 4 in that question. The slope or that coordinate, we're looking at 39.2.